week eight of the fantasy football season and here's the top 36 running backs i'm ranking this week so this week no bye weeks after last week six teams were on by number one christian mccaffrey of the san francisco 49ers so mccaffrey he looked good i know he wasn't a hundred percent in that game in week seven monday night football at the minnesota vikings but he still scored two touchdowns in the game best running back in the league and once again with a good matchup for cincinnati he's number one number two travis Etienne of the Jacksonville Jaguars. So Travis Etienne over the last few weeks, he's been one of the best running backs in fantasy football. I know this week not a great matchup at the Pittsburgh Steelers, but he's getting a huge workload. He's the bell cow over there. A lot of people thought Tanks Bigsby was gonna take a lot of work this season, but that obviously hasn't been the case. And even in a tougher matchup, he can catch the ball out of the backfield and he's got that home run ability. So I got him at two, number three, Austin Eckler. The Los Angeles Chargers, so Eckler, he's definitely been struggling with injuries and even his play over the last few weeks. He returned in week six versus the Dallas Cowboys, didn't do much. Then last week in and out of the game at the Chiefs with an injury. But Austin Eckler, if he plays in this game and he's ready to go, he's got a great matchup versus the Bears. Bears, one of the worst defenses in the league. And Eckler, we know he's a dual threat, one of the best receiving backs out of the backfield. And another home run hitter as well, where if he breaks one into the second level of the defense, he's going to be gone. So this week here, this is a big game for the Los Angeles Chargers. And I think Eckler bounces back and has a good one. Number four, Brees Hall of the New York Jets. So Brees Hall, it's his time now over there in the backfield for this Jet team. Dalvin Cook, they brought him in. I thought coming into the season, it was a waste for the most part for Dalvin Cook to come to this New York Jet team, but obviously he chased the money and Hall wasn't 100%, but now the last few weeks we've seen Hall have monster games. We've seen the explosion. He's a home run hitter as well. And this week here, the middle of the pack type of giant defense, as long as the Jets could open some holes up here for Brees Hall, I think he has a big ball game. Number five, Alvin Kamara of the New Orleans Saints. Alvin Kamara has been a PPR machine over the last few weeks since he's been back from suspension. And he's the only guy Derek Carr really looks for a lot in the passing game 12 catches last week's game versus the jacksonville jaguars and this week here in a possible shootout on the fast track in indianapolis indoors once again alvin kamara he's busted up the rankings quickly over the last few weeks and i got him in five number six raheem mostert of the miami dolphins of mostert he's taken the league by storm this season but the only thing with mostert's always is he gonna stay healthy and can he play a full season? Obviously, he's a mainstay in this offense. And I love his speed as Mike McDaniel in this Miami Dolphin offense. So this week here, a good matchup versus the New England Patriots. The backfield this is Salvin Ahmed. He didn't really get much work at Jeff Wilson last week. And it was a tough matchup versus the Eagles. But he still did average 5 yards per carry. He had 9 carries, 45 yards. So this week with a good matchup versus the Pats. I think he bounces back with a big game. Number 7, Saquon Barkley. Of the New York Giants to Barkley West week. He in game 18 fantasy points versus the Commanders. Beat the battle in New York with the Jets and Giants. And we know this Jet front line's vicious, one of the best front lines in the league. But Saquon Barkley is a dynamic running back and a game breaking type of back as well, who's a good receiver out of the backfield. So this week, the volume is going to be there for Barkley. They're going to heavily rely on him, is this Giant team, I believe. And I got him at seven. Number eight, DeAndre Swift. The Philadelphia Eagles to DeAndre Swift. It's been a great pickup for this Eagle team, trading a fourth rounder to get Swift on this roster. And he could do it all, catch the ball out of the backfield in between the tackle runner. And obviously defenses, they're more worried about A.J. Brown, Dallas Goddard, and Devonta Smith and rightfully so. So a lot of running lanes and just a lot of great games so far here for Swift in his first season with this Eagle team. And I got him at number nine, Isaiah Pacheco. Of the Kansas City Chiefs. So this Kansas City Chief team, they've been looking for a running back over the last few seasons. We know Claude Edwards Hilaire. They drafted him early a few years ago in the draft, but he hasn't panned out. And Pacheco, he's one of the toughest runners in the league. Running guys over, taking big contact. And he's been putting up points week after week, at least 15 or more fantasy points over the last four weeks. So this week, a great matchup at the Denver Broncos. That don't really stop anyone. And we've seen runners have big years all year round versus Bronco team. So this week, once again, Pacheco, I think has a good one at the division rival. And I think in the second half of this game, he'll be running the clock out as well. Number 10, Kenneth Walker of the Seattle Seahawks. So Kenneth Walker, a lot of people thought Zach Charbonnet coming into the year, running back they got in the second round was gonna take work, but that obviously hasn't been the case. And then Kenneth Walker, one of the best running backs in all fantasy football. So this week, I know it's a little bit of a tougher matchup 
versus the Browns. But we saw Jonathan Taylor last week have a good game. He got things going. And this could be a mini shootout possibly with the Browns and the Seahawks. Or I could see it going the other way with the Seahawks blow them out in this game if P.J. Walker is the starter. But anyway, I got Kenneth Walker, 10, number 11. The mentioned Jonathan Taylor of the Indianapolis Colts. So Taylor, his holdout, an injury, whatever it was, ended in week four. And he signed the contract three years, 42 million. The first two weeks back, Zach Morse got majority of the touches. But last week, Taylor, he had more touches. And he had a nice ball game. So I think Taylor's got his legs on the room. He looked pretty explosive. He made a few grabs, found the end zone out of the backfield last week. And this week here versus New Orleans Saint team, where Travis Etienne came off a solid game versus them. I think this week, once again, Taylor is a great option at 11. Number 12, Tony Pollard of the Dallas Cowboys. So Tony Pollard, we know he's an explosive running back. But the numbers haven't been all that great this season from week one to five each week his fantasy points went down and then week six he bumped it back up where he had 80 yards receiving even though 60 plus of them were on one catch but anyway this week tony pollard and the cowboys have the rams and i think this is gonna be a game where they're gonna try to run the clock and keep puka nako and cooper cup those high powered wide receivers and offense off the field so this week here i think tony pollard's gonna get a huge workload coming off a bye week and i think the cowboys can implement more plays for him and the line's getting healthier after the bye number 13 derrick henry of the tennessee titans said derrick henry it's been a mixed bag of results so far this season but he's still a player that's going out there and he's gonna have those big games at time i know this week a tougher matchup versus the atlanta falcons but i still think henry's gonna find running room we don't know who's going to be quarterback, Tannehill, Levis, or Malik Willis. But I still think Derrick Henry goes out there and puts in a solid performance. Number 14, B. John Robinson of the Atlanta Falcons. He's definitely fallen down the rankings the last few weeks here. Is B. John. Week 5, he only had 11 fantasy points. Week 6, he only had 13. And then last week, he had an illness. I don't even know why he was active. And a lot of fantasy owners had him in their lineups. And he just had one carry for three yards. So he definitely did them in this week. It's not the greatest of matchups at Tennessee, which is pretty stout versus the run. But anyway, Bijan's been a first-round pick. And like I said, the first four weeks of the season, he was great. But the last three weeks have been a disappointment. So hopefully he bounces back from the illness and has a good game. Number 15, Josh Jacobs of the Las Vegas Raiders. So Jacobs, he held out majority of the offseason. He has had some good games and some games he hasn't shown up like last week versus Chicago Bears. But this week on Monday Night Football with a backup quarterback most likely in there once again. I think they're going to have to rely on Jacobs early and often and keep this solid offense off the field. So Josh Jacobs, he does have 26 catches already this season. Pretty decent matchup and I think he bounces back in this one. 16, Ramondre Stevenson of the New England Patriots as Stevenson, one of the best receiving backs out of the backfield. And the game script in this one is they could be down early and often to this Miami Dolphin high-powered offense where they got to throw the football. And we know Mac Jones doesn't really stretch the field. It's a lot of dump-offs and a lot of intermediate to slant routes. So this week here, I think Stevenson, after the last two weeks, he's bounced back. I have him at 16, 17, Jameer Gibbs of the Detroit Lions. So no doubt about it, Jameer Gibbs, what a game it was last week with 27 fantasy points in PPR leagues. He even had nine catches for 58 yards, but right now it was a lot of garbage time, and the Ravens played a lot of prevent towards the end of that game. But this week, it's a great matchup. Monday Night Football versus the Vegas Raiders. One of the weakest D's in the league. We just saw Deonta Foreman go off for a three-touchdown game versus them. So Jameer Gibbs, as long as David Montgomery isn't coming back in this game, which I don't think he is. They're going to give him one more week, and then they got the bye next week. Yeah, I think Gibbs carves out a solid game at 17. Number 18, James Cook of the Buffalo Bills. So James Cook's been a solid number two running back this season in fantasy football. And this week here, a pretty decent matchup versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. that have been middle of the pack against the run this season, but Cook could catch the ball as well out of the backfield. Damian Harris... We know he's out multiple weeks with the naked head injury. And Latavius Murray, he really hasn't done much. I look Cook at 18, 19, Aaron Jones of the Green Bay Packers. So last week, it was a heavy dose of A.J. Dillon for this Green Bay Packer team. And we know Jones isn't 100% coming off the hamstring. But I think this week versus a division foe that he's very familiar with, track record versus the Minnesota Vikings. I think Aaron Jones, he bounces back in this game. They're going to give him a good workload, I believe. And he's one of the better receiving backs out of the backfield as well. So it's just about volume for Aaron Jones. And that's why he's fallen down on the list a little bit. Number 20, Joe Mixon 
of the Cincinnati Bengals. So Joe Mixon this season, the ceiling's pretty much been 14 fantasy points. But now coming off a of bye week and Joe Burrow getting healthier, I think this offense opens up a little bit more. I know it's a tough matchup at the San Francisco Bull 49ers, but there's no threat in that backfield that's even taking any work pretty much over there for the Cincinnati Bengals team. Mixon's getting 90-95% of the touches so even in a tough match or volume alone i got him in 2021 20, deonta foreman of the chicago bears so foreman each and every season it just seems like he finds a way to find the field where he's coming into the year as a third string back we saw with tennessee a few years ago henry went down he had a big season in the second half last season mccaffrey traded he had some monster games and so far he had one mid game and then a monster game last week with 33 fantasy points. So right now, it's not a great matchup with the Chargers here. It could be a game that gets out of hand early, and we know Foreman don't catch the football out of the backfield. But anyway, this week, I got him at 21. If this could be a close game like last week, and then they blew him out in the second half was the Bears. I think Foreman could be capable of getting a good workload once again. 15 to 22 touch range. Number 22, Alexander Madison of the Minnesota Vikings. So Alexander Madison, it really has been that great of a year for him, but he's still getting a good workload. I know Cam Akers is, is over there for this Minnesota Viking team, but Alexander Madison, he's a guy they had a lot of trust in letting Dalvin Cook go. Dalvin Cook hasn't done much this year, but anyway, Madison, like I said, he's a mid two running back to flex option, the best in a mediocre matchup at Green Bay. Number 23, Kareem Hunt of the Cleveland Browns. So Jerome Ford, he's in a walking boot most likely out he had an explosive run to start that game at the indianapolis colts and then got injured in the second quarter so could next man up and now they run to kareem hunt is this cleveland brown team i know pierre strong he got some good work as well in that game but hunt knows the playbook he's been there many seasons and i believe he'll be the leader in touches in the backfield it's not the greatest of matchups in seattle but i think some decent workload he'll get and he's a decent receiver out of the backfield as well 24 gus edwards of the Baltimore Ravens to Gus Edwards. He's been up and down so far this season. And last week had a monster game was Edwards. I know it was a fluky 80 yard screen as well that made most of his day. And he had 64 yards rushing and a touchdown. So Gus Edwards, he's most likely a touchdown dependable running back this season. But this week here with a good matchup at Arizona as a number two running back or flex option, I think he's decent. 25, Javante Williams of the Denver Broncos. So Javante Williams, his yards per carry this season have been pre pretty solid, no doubt about it. But this week here, I think the game script's not going to be in his favor. We saw a few weeks ago versus same chief team where he did have 10 carries, 52 yards and a two point conversion. But that's just not enough touches, not enough to have a productive day. So this is a game where I think Denver will be trailing a lot and have to throw a lot. And we know Julia McLaughlin and P. Ryan of the receiving and third down back. So this week, just on game script, I don't think Williams has a big game. And I got him at 25, 26, Damian Pierce of the Houston Texans. So Pierce possibly could be losing his job any week now with Devin Singletary starting to get some work. But right now, I'm going to give Pierce one more chance. I did low, rank him pretty low in these rankings here, pretty much as a flex option, even with a great matchup at the Carolina Panthers. So pretty much Pierce has been touchdown dependable. And we'll just see if Pierce... Gets the touches or Singletary in this one. 27, Najee Harris of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Najee Harris finally had a breakout game last week with over 15 fantasy points. But I still believe Jalen Warren's going to be the guy when it's all said and done in terms of putting up fantasy points and the most production. Harris, yes, he's still going to get his touches. 12, 18 touch range each and every game. This week, it's a decent matchup versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. A middle of the pack defense. But like I said, the explosiveness hasn't been there for Harris. And if he's not getting the touchdown, he's not really putting up points. 28 Rashad White of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So a tough matchup here at the Buffalo Bills. And Rashad White last week, most of his game was catching the football out of the backfield. Because he only had 13 carries, 34 yards. Not even averaging 3 yards per carry. So right now, White, his averages have been bad this season. He's really only had 2 good games in 6 this season. And I think this team is going to be down in this one. I know Buffalo has been going off to slow starts to start the year over the last few weeks especially but this week i think thursday night football buffalo gets focused they throw the ball a lot over the yard and i got white at 28 29 brian robinson of the washington commander so another touchdown dependable running back 
is been Robinson over the last few weeks. If he's not getting a touchdown, he's pretty much getting six or seven fantasy points. We know he's not really a receiver out of the backfield is Robinson. That's Antonio Gibson. And we saw Rodriguez last week lead the backfield in touches here. So we don't know if it's going to be a three-headed thing or what. But Brian Robinson, like I said, if he's not getting a touchdown the last few weeks, the numbers have been down. Number 30, Darrell Henderson of the Los Angeles Rams. So Henderson looks like he's going to be the man over there for this Los Angeles Ram team. We know they lost Kyron Williams to injury. We know they traded Cam Akers early in the season. Royce Freeman, he did get 12 touches, but Henderson had 18 touches in that game and found the end zone with 61 rushing yards. So this week, he had no doubt about it, a tough matchup at the Dallas Cowboys, but he's still a starting running back and a guy who's got experience in this McVay offense. I know last season it wasn't good at all, for Henderson and they cut him loose but right now he's pretty much the only guy McVay has any confidence in in that backfield 31 Chuba Hubbard for the Carolina Panthers of so Miles Sanders he hasn't looked good at all this season and Chuba Hubbard he's a good receiving back out of the backfield he's decent in between the tackles he's never going to be a huge bell cow guy getting 20 25 carries per game but a guy getting 10 12 carries a game and three four catches a game is good for a Chuba Hubbard and this week in a matchup versus a young Houston Texan defense, I think he could be a decent flex option as Hubert. But also this in defense has been getting better as the weeks go on. So I got him at 31, 32, Zach Morris of the Indianapolis Colts. So Zach Morris, we saw some monster games from him early in the season. But now he's still going to get work with Jonathan Taylor. But Taylor's getting his legs on the room, like I mentioned. And Taylor definitely outplayed him last week. So right now, Zach Morris will still get his 10, 12 touches per game. I believe for at least the next few weeks before Taylor really takes over 85, 90% of the work. So this week with a decent matchup versus the Saints that have been a hit or miss defense versus the run this season. I got him at 32, 33, Jalen Warren of the Pittsburgh Steelers. So Jalen Warren, he just needs more touches. And I believe this guy could be a top 20 running back week in and week out. If let's say he had 15 to 18 touches per game, we know he's a better receiver out of the backfield than Najee Harris. We know he's got more explosiveness, yards per carry, and he just makes the most of his touches. So this week here, in a grinded out type of game, I could see with the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Steelers. I got him at 33, 34. Amari DiMercito of the Arizona Cardinals. So a tough matchup versus physical Baltimore Raven defense. And this could be a ball game that gets out of hand, but at least DiMercito is a running back that we've seen catch the football out of the backfield. Keontae Ingram, I thought he was going to be the guy over there last week but he didn't even see a touch that went back to Di Mercido and like I said he's a better receiver out of the backfield than a young guy who's got some bursts of this week here even in the tough matchup if you're in a tough spot with injuries even though every team's playing like I mentioned he's 34 35 Jaleel McLaughlin of the Denver Broncos I believe he's ahead of Samaje P. Ryan right now as a third down and passing downs back here is Jaleel McLaughlin we know he's explosive we know he could take a screen to the house anytime if he's getting the blocks in front of him. And this week here versus Kansas City, I think they got to work through McLaughlin. Jerry Judy really hasn't done much in the passing game. I know Cortland Sutton's been pretty decent, but besides that, nothing's going on in that passing game. Marvin Mims, the first few weeks, showed up. Last few weeks, he hasn't done much. So right now, McLaughlin has a deep sweeper in PPR leagues. I think could be all right in the 36th and final back I'm ranking. Justice Hill of the Baltimore Ravens and right now Gus Edwards we know he's been getting more touches than Hill even though it's been almost a 50-50 split with Hill being you know better receiver out of the backfield so this week here at Arizona it's just unpredictable how this backfield works over there for this Baltimore Raven team but this is a game obviously where I see the Ravens up early and often and then in the second half they just run the football a whole lot trying to chew the clock out so right now I think he'll could get a few touches in this game, but I'm not expecting a huge game out of him. So that's the top 36 running backs I'm ranking here for week eight of the fantasy football season.